Okay, today we're going to take an updated look at Nitrux, which is now on version 1.2.9. I've been meaning to take a look at this since it got released, which is on the 29th of May, so we're a little far behind now. We're now on the 11th of June, but we're going to take a look at it nonetheless. So there's been a few things that have been updated here, so we're just going to have a very quick run through the change log. So they've changed the kernel that we use from mainline builds to Linux OEM builds. These builds provide automatic updates, and the version of this kernel is 5.6.0-1010. They've updated KDE Plasma to the version of 5.18.5. KDE Frameworks has also been updated as well as Qt and the KDE applications. So they've updated all Melwi applications and the Melwi Kit Framework to version 1.1.1. And we will take a look at that. There's also change logs there if you want to have a look at the Melwi stuff in particular. And they've updated the Nitrix Dark Theme and Dark Color Scheme to improve the appearance of the Melwi applications. And they've also updated the Love Icon Theme with the Doodle component for Melwi applications. So they've got some new wallpapers here that were previously included in their sort of premium stuff. So if we go into Configure Desktop, you will notice there's a few more wallpapers for you to select from out of the box now. We've gone for this little minimal pizza, because I think it's okay. <laughs> and they've also updated the Plymouth boot theme to the dark version. This does not support BGRT yet, but, that next, but the next version will. MPV is updated to 0 0.32.0 and LibreOffice has now been updated to version 6.4.3.2 as well as Firefox which has now also been updated to version 76.0.1. So they've replaced KSysGuard which is a system monitor with QPS so it's a lightweight system resource a monitor and user interface which uses the Qt toolkit. So if we were to open this up you can have a look at what that looks like here. So here's your little system monitor which will tell you sort of your running commands there and then you get a little bit for your CPU, your memory, your swap and your uptime. And that's all your sort of cores or threads there as well. And there we go. So we're going to close that and we're going to keep going through until we get to the part that I'm most interested in and we've just arrived. So it's now coming with Cronkite installed out of the box which is a sort of a Kwin script to enable Windows tiling on your KDE desktop. So much like how Pop OS has done it with the Pop Shelf for GNOME, you can basically do the same thing here. So what we're gonna do is have a look. So you've got the dynamic tiling script for Kwin version 27, 217-00-37. So in this page here, in their GitHub releases page, you can now have a look at the default bindings. They might differ on here. So what I'm gonna do is just jump into the shortcuts because they can all be changed quite easily just by going into the Kwin section of here. And as you can see now, these are all your Cronkite key bindings, which you can change from the defaults or leave as is. What I'm going to do is not really touch them too much for now. So we're going to go into Windows Management and we're going to go to Kwin Scripts and we're going to enable the tiling script, Cronkite, and we're going to click Apply. So we're going to minimize that. Right, so let's see how it works. So if we were to say open up station, which I have binded to control alt T, that has now put that to the right and that's at the left. And if we wanted to change the focus of the window, we could press J and also press K to get to the other side. Now, if we wanted to move them about, we could do super meta, uh, shift and meta, J, K, J, K, L, J, K. So that will sort of switch the position of the window that you're looking at. And you can also toggle floating mode by pressing super and F and now this window is floating. And if we just press it again, we're now back in tiling mode. And there are a few other options here, but we won't get too bogged down with them. So we've got set as master. We can do, I did see something else I wanted to show. So a lot of these are unbound as well. So we might want to, we might want to bind some in a moment. So you can cycle through the different layouts that are available by using meta and there we go, so we've now got spread, stair, tile, and monocle, free column, and spread. So that's all the, I think that's all of the layouts, yes. So we're gonna go back into tiling, so that's all the layouts that are available. And then it's got some key bindings already for the tile and the monocle, as well as we saw the floating as well. So we can increase and decrease. I think the D, yeah, meta and D is not actually binded to the default there. I think that's the window spread, but we do have Increase, so if we were to press meta and I, is that increase? I don't think that is, is it? Hmm. Right, let's close this one for a moment. No, not Firefox. Right, so now I'm gonna open a few more things now and see how it actually organizes the position of the windows. So let's open up station again. I'll tell you what, let's get out of the...
Right, let's open up the system settings. I just want to unenable it for a minute. And just close a few windows and we'll start it off fresh. Right, so we've got anything else open? Right, okay, so let's re enable it and we're going to see how it actually organizes these windows now. So that's full screen on one application. Let's open up Station and now let's organize that to the right. And then if we open up another one, that's done that. And then if we go on to the focused window on the left and see if opening a window on here changes anything, right, so it's automatically ordering that on there. But if we used to go Super Shift and J, you can now switch between the layouts. So I think that's pretty cool actually. I like having a tiling manager, a Windows manager, especially on a fully fledged desktop like KDE or GNOME. So it's pretty cool that they've included this out of the box. What we're gonna do now is jump back into the system settings and disable that for the time being. So let's go into shortcuts, rule one. Let's go into Windows management, KWIN scripts, and disable that. So what I also wanted to take a look at while we had Nitrix here is as I said, they've updated a lot of the Maui kit app stuff and all of that is in here. So the Melby kits it comes with is Buho or Buho, however you want to say that, Index, Nota, Pix, Station, and Vave. I, I, I still don't know how you meant to pronounce that. But anyway, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> six applications there. And we've also installed a lot of them on our phone. So we're going to see how they compare together across different devices. So let's just make that a different size there. Okay, so we've got one window open there. Let's open up a terminal. And let's type in RCP byte. So this is a little program that will allow you to mirror your Android device on your screen and inter interact with it like so. I'll blur my, uh, my little password out there. Okay, so we have got, let's think, first compare it with index on here. So let's open up index, which is here. <coughs> let's allow. Right, so it's using a lighter theme. Can we get a dark theme for this? Interface, dark mode. Okay, it's not letting us change it at the moment though. No. Right, what I'm gonna do is change the theme on here to the light theme just so I can sort of see how it looks side by side. So let's go on to global theme and go on to Nitrix. Click apply. And we are now on the light theme Let's reopen index. <clears throat> okay. So let's get out of that. So there we go. So there we have the files on there, the folders, and we also have the folders on there. It all looks pretty similar really. So if we was to do that, fully convergent, as you can see, it basically looks exactly the same apart from we've got a little bit down at the bottom here. But yeah, pretty cool, I like that. So let's go into a folder in here. So I've got a Maui folder here with all of the, oh no, this is just for the Maui togging stuff. And then if we go into a different folder in here, and then you have some quick locks down there, that's pretty cool. What folder would this be? There we go. So if we do the same one there, that's for the desktop. So I think it's pretty cool that you can now actually use the whole mail wicket stuff on your Android. It's been available for a little while, but I think they've come sort of a bit further since I last checked them out. So what we're going to do now is get out of this. I do not like trying to do this on an Android phone from here. There we go. Look at that. All right. So we're going to now check out one of the different mail wicket applications. So we just checked out index. So if we're going back into the mail apps and let's go for Buho, which is like a note manager, which you can also sync across your device in manage accounts. So if we were to add an account, uh, that doesn't seem to be working at the moment. That's a shame. Well, you can sync it with servers like open desktop and things like that, but it doesn't appear to have the option here on, on this one at the moment. Okay, let's go on to the phone version. So it's called Buho. I do believe I've got it installed. I do indeed. Right, and I'm just going to also make that about that size. Okay, so as you can see, it's basically the same interface. So we've got a little plus there, and then it comes out with, I do believe that's bookmark, 
new book, sorry. So you've got books, you can create a different book, that's a link. And then you also have just a standard note there, and then you can type away, get it out of it. Okay, we're not gonna worry about that at the moment. And then the same as here, and if, as I said, once that whole sort of desk, uh, account syncing is working, you could then have all of your notes synced across your devices, your phone and your computer, which is what I'm waiting for the most, to be honest. I think that would be pretty cool when we can just have a good notes application that you can work across your devices. And I think I would probably switch over to that once that was all fully set up. Right, let's go for a different one. So we also have Nota, which is more of just a text editor. I don't know if I did install that one on the phone or if there was one available. Oh, let's open that back up. So let's see if I don't know if I did get Nota. I did. Brilliant. So we need to allow that. Okay, so we've got Nota there, and that's so here it is on the desktop, here it is on the phone. So let's add a new note, create a document. And that's the body. And let's do the same on here. So new note, create a new document, add. There we go. So there we go. You now have a text editor that you can also grab for your Android phone and an APK. I will leave the link to the Maui Kit website, which you can download all of these APKs from. And then as, you, as I say, if you make this larger, you will expose the menu to the left there, which has got some quick launch sort of locations. I wonder if you can access them on here. So how do we get out? Let's get out. Oh, that's just undo. So let's go focus. Nope. Okay, cool. So you can also jump into it like that and get your files like that. That's pretty cool. I like it. And as you can see, it was also using the love icon theme there, which is the same theme as what we're using on here. So let's open up index. Let's open up, say, yeah, let me just see if that was the love icon theme. It did appear to look like it. It looks like it to me. So you've got some nice theming there for the icons as well as in, in the Android apps. Let's get out of that one. And next up, we're gonna take a quick little look at so we've looked at station, which is our terminal. <clears throat> so PIX, I'm not gonna open up PIX on my phone because God knows what's on my phone. I don't need that drama right now. So we have PIX there, which is a sort of image manager where you can go for a well, gallery basically, where you can store your pictures and cycle through. So let's see if we can just download some random images quickly and see how that organizes it. Just get some penguins. <clears throat> I don't care about getting the full size image, we're just going to get a couple of little ones. There you go, I am root. Right, let's see how that organises our images now. So this is pics, no pics, let's add a new source. Let's go into the settings here. Can we add a source in here? There we go. So downloads is a source that's available, but it's not picking them up. Let's make sure that we actually have saved them in pictures or downloads. Let's open up index. So downloads, there we go. So they're all there. So let's close pics and reopen pics and see if it will pick up those images. Oh God, what happened there? Right, Maui apps, and we go to Pix. There you go, so that's now got them there. So if you were to click on one, and then you can just cycle through, and you can add a little heart on your images, and then if you were to go back into the main screen, you can also full screen it like that as well. That's pretty cool. Right, how do we get out of the current view? What's this one here? Rotate, so you can also rotate inside the application. It looks like a share button that, but I don't think it does too much on here, but it might on your Android phone. So you can unfavor it, you can do a tag, you can show in folder, or you can export it. 
So if we go to print, there we go. So we can get back to our gallery like that, and that's where you can also access your tags and your folders. So you can do it, you can browse it by folder. So can you do right, right clicking on it as well, and you can remove it, and that's the same things we just showed there. Let's get out of that bit. You can change the layout of it to a list and a category, and then you can also search through your applications and organize it by title. Let's have a look at how that works. There we go. So that will just organize things by title, modify creation date, format, size, and ascending. So yeah, pretty cool. Let's have a look at the last little one now. Although we have no sort of commercial free music that we can really play on it because I don't want to get striked or anything. But if we go into the Maui apps now, I have installed it on my phone, I do believe. I haven't actually looked at it on my phone though, so let's have a look. There we go. We're going to allow it, but I'm not going to play any music. I wonder if it's going to fire my music library on here. I've got about 60 gig of music on my memory card on here. So if I add sources, storage, I mean, it might be where it is. Okay, it's not finding any of my tracks. Um, let's have a look at sources. As I said, I'm not really going to play anything anyway, so it's not too much of a worry, this. So, uh, well, maybe it's because it's not on the um, memory card. I think that's probably why it's because it's on the memory card and this is just a default storage. Okay, we won't worry about that for now though, but that is the music player and I've shown a little bit about it on the last video, but as again, you have your albums, your artists and your playlists and then you can do a plus there and go for the cloud. Oh, that's pretty cool. You don't have any accounts up. Yeah, so that one's still not working, but I'm sure that's all going to come at some point and it will be pretty cool having all these cloud accounts all synced up together. Um, yeah, I will definitely start using these once that's all working, but it's pretty cool that you can now also get the Android apps on your website, all available for you at mailwikit.org. Might be wrong, I'll leave a link in the description. So I'm not going to go over too much extra stuff on this video because as I said, I'll leave a link up the top there for the last video I've done on Nitrix. But just a quick run through, you have your KDE apps, things like Kden Live, Latte Doc, etc. And it also, you also might know the difference actually. So on the last time we've done the video, they seem to have dropped the default look and feel and didn't have Latte Doc there and it was a one panel in sort of solution at the bottom as well, if I remember. But it looked quite nice anyway, but I do prefer the dock and a panel at the top there. Does the global menu work? Let's have a look. No. Let's open up something else. Hold on. Let me open up Caden Live a minute. There we go. So we've got global menu as well. But as I said, you have to sort of do a few extra things to actually get Firefox working with it. I did say that in my last video about Enzo though, because they had that enabled out of the box. Anyway, that's been a little quick run through of Nitrix 1.29. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.